Good night, good night. Welcome, Facebook. Uh, hold on, let me just pull in this door. <laughs> okay, welcome, everybody. I apologize for any amount of noise, first of all, and any kind of disordered thinking just because I literally just came in from work. Uh, internship which some of you I've told talked about I'm an internship here for the next nine more months I started um, so I'm a third way through my first semester <laughs> of internship so we have to look at it like that because um, there's just so much time left but you have to take it in like little pieces so welcome everybody um today we are celebrating or we are talking about uh world mental health day and world mental health day i just had to come on i could not not do a live tonight um anybody who knows me would know that um this is like the new years of mental health practitioners this and all the other days geared towards you know suicide awareness um, and so on um, so this was a day I had to definitely come on and talk about stuff so the theme of this year's World Mental Health Day I'm sure some of you may know or may not know is a mental health in the workplace and so I really can okay thumbs okay people tell me if you can hear me first of all before I start I always forget to ask can you hear me is this a good enough like level Yes, is that thumbs up? Thanks, Roger. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so once you can hear me, good. So this year, the theme is uh, workplace mental health, mental health in the workplace. And so I did a presentation. I was invited by Rotarac of Barbados to do, I really hope you guys can't hear everybody in the background. Oh my God. Good, so yes, so. I did a presentation on Sunday for Rotaract, for those who don't know, it's a junior arm of Rotary. And so they asked me to come and do a mental health talk. And um, and so I went there and it was really good, small but really good. It went really well. I tried to really hone in on the, the theme, which was workplace. And so these are youths who are either preparing for A-levels, some people are already in the working place, some people will be, um, joining the workplace soon so the theme this year is quite important because i think a lot of times we go to work we do what we have to do and we go home and we either deal with our own mental health issues in silence or we uh, ignore people around us who may have some mental health conditions and I, I i spoke with some of the persons who attended after and they said you know um I kind of knew some of those, some of those, I gave symptoms and signs of differing disorders that you might find in the workplace or just in general. And someone was like, yeah, I knew someone had something, you know, I knew something was wrong. As we would say in the Caribbean, he had not good. Um, he used to cause enough drama and all these, you know, negative connotations. And that's why um, I opened my, my speech with why is world mental health day important why is it important to have any awareness on any topic and in many cases it's to spread information to give people an idea of what is the situation at hand i asked them i said you have to compare it to things like cancer and aids like why do we do aids walk we kind of establish what aids is but that is what we assume we assume people know about aids so um, why are we still walking? Same thing applies to mental health. We have to continue walking. We have to keep on talking about mental health because not everyone understands what mental health means, what the conditions mean, what the conditions even look like. And that's really important for us to know going forward in our homes, in our communities, in our workplaces, what are some of the signs? Now, some people ask, now, what are some of the signs? I don't want to go too heavy because I don't want this video to be too long. Um, but some of the signs that you can look for is um, a drastic change in personality and a drastic change in thus behavior. 
So if you notice that someone was before quite, you know, boisterous and would speak their mind in meetings and those kinds of things, I mean, something else might be going on. They might be sick. They might be having some troubles at home. They may have a conflict with someone on the team at that time. And so they just don't feel like sharing. And so um, that may be one thing. But if you notice like a prolonged um, change in behavior, you know, someone is really agitated, they're always complaining about being stressed or they might always be complaining about a lot of pain, things like that because stress is manifested physically and so prolonged stress stress can lead someone to feel overwhelmed. If someone is open, openly saying, you know, I'm very overwhelmed, um, I don't know how to focus, you might see someone not concentrating well as before, like you have to tell the person two, three different times, you know, did you check up on this call? Did you check up on this email? Did you respond? Rem having to remind people, those are things which you might see in the workplace. You might see someone get very withdrawn, very isolated. They may not be able to communicate their ideas as much an, um, as before. And so it's just a general change in in behavior. And so um, a lot of times um, the performance or work performance drops. Um, you might see another side of the coin, which is they might be suffering from mania. So someone who might have been quite cool and calm and collective, as I would say, um, but now they're like, Oh, Riza, we need to do this paper, this paper, this project, and we need to go and find funding for this, this, this. So quite easily, you can see the person is having these very unrealistic expectations of themselves and others. And that may be an indication of maybe a form of mania. And for those who know about bipolar 1 and 2, we have the what they call the swings, but what I call a spectrum. So people who are on the lower side of the spectrum who may have lots of depression and sadness and can't function and can't concentrate. And then they may have a swing up whereby they're like, yes, I can get so many things done. And that lasts about a month. And so if you see someone kind of moving and then they go back down and they're very isolated and they're very quiet and depressed, and then two, three months later, you might see them go right back up again. That is kind of a sign of bipolar. One or two depends on how long it lasts and how intense the mania is. Sometimes you may not have intense mania, but they, you do have those bouts of feeling really, really great, really, really energized, and then a really dark slump. And so those are things that you might see in the workplace. Um, another thing you might see is someone picking up really bad habits. So they might pick up really unhealthy habits. So maybe they weren't a drinker before, but now you find that they're drinking really often. Or maybe you might hang out with them after work and you notice that they're drinking in the home um, by themselves. Sometimes they may pick up um, bad habits like drug use, or they might enter in um, in a unhealthy relationship um, because they're looking for that kind of support and then they find themselves vulnerable to other forms of abuse, which is what happens as much as one of the myths is that as much as they think that um, persons who have mental health conditions are violent, it's actually the contrary whereby persons um, are vulnerable when they have a mental health condition sometimes to be in an abusive home or with an abusive partner or they may um, they may be susceptible to you know um, living in unhealthy conditions and on uninhabitable conditions um, so a lot of things can be really happening with our staff members that we don't know and a lot of times you put on a smile and they're like I'm fine and you got to look for the what we call in psychology incongruence and the incongruence is basically saying yeah everything's fine everything is fine mm -hmm. yeah I'm fine yeah, and you see that the body language doesn't match the the words and um, so these are the things that you can see you know someone who's really fatigued someone might be lashing out of the staff for the first time ever these are signs so that's what you look for in the workplace and I'm hoping that you will take some of these signs and you know not zone in on everybody or a particular person but you might be able to pick up something and then what you do is then you try to have a conversation and I always tell people this it's very awkward for some people to have a conversation about mental health with people but I think a simple knocking on someone's office door and saying hey like I noticed you were really tired last week and you're really tired this week too you know like do you need a break 
maybe you know should you have you spoken to anybody are you sick that kind of thing and you start to have that conversation on where that person is mentally or even physically you know they may not even know they have a mental health condition they might not know that stress is manifested physically and so once you kind of start having that conversation you can start to kind of help them in the direction of um, of getting help and so it's very important for persons to be for managers especially to keep that kind of door an open door policy here at my residence I have an open door policy once I'm home my windows are open my doors sometimes even open wide open which basically is telling my residents for those who don't know I'm a residence assistant here in the Cave Hill campus I'm basically telling my residents you can come in and speak to me I'm available I'm here for you and so that is what I am doing when I develop a culture of positive space and open door policy so what you guys could do what people can do in the work um, space is say look these are the group rules for meetings these are the this is what I demand basically for you to be in my space like to come into my office my office not a space for gossip my office is not a space for slander my office is not a space for discrimination my office is a safe space my office is a space that you can come and know that it's confidential that like I always tell people gossip ends at me gossip almost always 95% of the time unless it has to do with something that is directly important to someone um, you know if someone's cheating on their partner or something like that then maybe I feel might feel inclined to tell the person but honestly gossip ends at me why and why it has always ended at me is because a I was a victim of gossip my entire teenage life and so that has been my my promise to myself that I'm not going to be a victim and continue to do what others did to me but also importantly what you tell me has always been a value a value of mine that confidentiality is important to me and people trusting me is important to me and people knowing where to go and have someone to talk to is important to me and so <laughs> Hi, Sophie. Oh, God. Um, so for me, that has always been the space I create and the approach I take. I want my residents to come to me. I want my clients to feel comfortable with me. So I let them know, as my Trinidadian professor would say, early o'clock, early o'clock that this is how I am and this is who I am and this is what I can be for you. And so... And so I just try to set that standard. And this is something you can do in your own office. When I sat with some of the people from Rotaract, they're like, you know, Raisa, this is wishful thinking. This is an ideal space. You're right. There are people in your office space who might just be, in the words of one of the participants, trifling. You know, there's just people who like drama, people who want to be in your business, people who want to slander you, people who don't want to see you rise up the... Um, ladder in terms of especially in public service. I worked in public service. I know and so um, You see that happening and by all means you don't have to be friends with those people I always tell people there's a difference between friends Friendly and civil and many times when I work with people who are trifling I am on the boundary of Civil because at the end of the day my professional stance is you got a job. I got a job. We got to do this job and whatever personal crap comes in the middle of it, it's not going to get in the way of my integrity and my work and what has to be done. So I tell people that straight up. I would not say to someone, well, I don't like you, but I would never say that to make it awkward in a workspace. So if you have someone who is making it awkward for people in the, in the workspace, whether it be for mental health related issues, you know, domestic violence related issues, or even hom um, homophobic comments. Those are things that honestly, as humans and as Guyanese and Islanders who want, who we want to progress into a more holistic, positive way of looking at mental health, we have to nip those things in the bud. We have to be able to say to people, I don't appreciate that comment, or what is wrong with you, or why don't you have a heart, or why can't you understand that something is wrong with this girl and we need to help her and so by developing this stance in the office place in the workplace we develop a culture of understanding we develop a culture of acceptance and by doing that we are breaking the stigma 
That is one of the main reasons why World Mental Health Day was created, because there's so much stigma, stigma and discrimination about this day and about those who live with it. And, a, and this is a lived experience day in, day out. People are like, oh, um, people who commit suicide live with attention. But it's like, excuse me, excuse me. If you knew what was going on in that person's life, do you not think that they would want to live? Don't you think they want to be in a better home environment? Don't you think they want to leave an abusive home or abusive partner? Do you think that they want to be, um, you know, out of work when they have really good qualifications for a job? Like you don't understand what people are coming into the workspace with. So by putting it across the board that we are a non-judgmental space, that we are an acceptance space, that we are an open space, you kind of level the field for everyone who's coming with their baggage to that office space every day and are dealing with their own things every day and by all means in the Caribbean people don't share their stuff people don't share what's happening and stuff like that in their life and that's absolutely fine you don't need to tell the whole office that you have financial problems you don't have to tell the whole office that you're in a domestic violence situation or that you are having depression or that you had mania last month that's fine but if you could just find one person in the office who's gonna help you that is probably the best thing that you can do and i always encourage managers to take their time and be that person because at the end of the day you are the person that people look up to you're the person who sets the standard and if the manager can't set the standard for non-judgmental non-discriminatory um you know uh, getting rid of the stigma and environment for mental health related reasons or the byproducts or things that cause mental health then you're just you shouldn't be a manager really <laughs> you you you're not leading you're that's what a manager is that's what a senior staff is you're supposed to be leading and helping to create a culture of strong independent mentally stable physically healthy workers whether it be public or private and so by you encouraging the drama and encouraging the com complacency which I say happens all the time in the Caribbean people are just complacent people don't go to their managers about their mental health issues even if they don't understand it because they're like well that person don't know nothing and that person is there in the session and that person is there in the drama and so by you not taking a stance and by you not being you know there for people then you cannot create the culture in a workspace you just it's very hard and it becomes more and more daunting okay so um some of the other things i suggested to people was you know building out that culture building out this positive space and environment um knowing the signs being able to sort for other people but understanding when something is is happening to you as well and knowing when to ask for help um seeing if there's any training going on in your community going on in your ministries going on with the ministry of health see if the mental health unit is putting on any talks or anything just to help alleviate any kind of um, distress that you might be happening might be happening and of course always using your positive and active coping mechanisms you know exercise and meditation and using resources and support such as family and friends and religious environments um, you know med people do a lot of things like eating well in meditation you know splurging on maybe some ice cream that kind of thing whatever it is that gets you through that week whatever gets you through that really um, hectic day that really helps because if you can alleviate acute moments of stress it can help with it not building up and then becoming a greater mental health condition um, and so on and knowing when to ask for help is really really important because you have to be able to know when it is no longer in your control when mental health is taking over your life when a condition leaves you feeling hopeless and not functioning at work and on the brink of maybe getting fired because you can't function but if you simply spoke to someone you trusted or simply spoke to your manager who created that environment for you created that um, positive space in the in the workplace then you would actually be able to alleviate those feelings that you're feeling um, 
overwhelmed and distressed and you know maybe something traumatic happened and you can't return right to work right away maybe you need to be able to have a manager in the space or a staff member who can be like look something's happened with Riza she can't come to work she needs a few days and then you write in your official thing and you go about your protocol um, workplace policy for mental health is really important to have it's not mandated in Guyana for people to have workplace policies on mental health, but I encourage people to go to, I was using these sites this weekend, um, mind, like mind.org.uk, and then another website called harmless.org uh, or .com, and they talk about how to develop mental health policies in a workplace how to make the workplace more mentally health friendly what to do as a manager what to do as a staff what to do as someone who's having mental health um, concerns and for those who want to help others um, those are really important um, of course things like things that you can do to create a healthier work environment is by I don't know who used to follow me on Instagram but a year and a half ago when I used to work at Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we used to have a, a daily or weekly uh, health challenges. So take the stairs, don't take the elevator, not that there's many elevators in Guyana, but take the stairs, um, you know, go to the park. If you work near the National Park, go to a gym, um, you know, get persons on your department or on your floor to maybe plan a, a after work activity. Ministry of Foreign Affairs is really good with that actually. We used to have domino nights sometimes. We used to have fish fries. We used to have chicken and chip days. Those kinds of things that help build camaraderie between a team is really helpful when you have mental health conditions or mental health um, symptoms. So um, also of course knowing when to ask for help in a task that maybe is not it's beyond your reach being able to ask them you know like how do i do this or like what am i doing wrong can i can you help me that kind of thing um, i also tell people to make create a to do it list every night before you go to bed because i know a lot of people suffer with this where they sit down in bed two three o'clock four o'clock in the morning and can't sleep because they're thinking of all these things that they have to do so by making a mental health sorry by making a list for the next day you basically write out all those things so they're they've left your mind you know they've left the mind you're able to now focus on what it is that you have to do which is sleep because you already know what you're going to do the next day so you're not thinking oh i gotta do this and i gotta pay this bill and how i gotta take and this taxi i gotta get and i gotta do this but by by already writing it down you've already established like okay i know what i have to do tomorrow and i feel better now i can go to sleep you know, I can rest assured that I've made concrete plans. I've been a little bit more organized. And I know a lot of people suffer with not being able, not being very organized. But this is a really good step to start with. Um, I tell people all the time, if I was to ever get kidnapped, like find my planner because everything goes in this. I even have like a little asterisk, do uh, mental health what? Facebook. What? So those are my residents. I don't know if you heard that, but they're really excited because we have Unity Week this week. So people have been super active. I think that's my cue to go soon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but they're so loud and they're like right outside my door and I'm right on the bottom. So anyway, so... These are some of the things you can do, take up challenges, you know, organize group activities that help people build a connection, build a bond so that you, yes, one plus one is two. Yeah, um, those are the chants that we have some at UE. <laughs> so yeah, so, and of course, know when to turn off yourself, turn off that work, um, turn off that work mind. I was, I, in an interview the last two weeks, I was asked, you know, how do I cope with being like a therapist and a student and a daughter and a friend? And I said, you know, when I leave this door and I step into my internship, I become a therapist. I turn on, I put on my therapist cap. I turn on my event planner cap, that kind of thing. I turn on my group therapist hat when I sit in that circle with them. I 
And then when I step back into this room, I, for a split moment, I become Riza, and then I turn back on my RA hat. So there are moments when I have to self-care, and like I said, I do my plants, I listen to my music, I cook, I, I enjoy a good British, you know, uh, trivia show. That's what I've been watching. For those who like numbers and letters and like trivia and stuff, there's a program I watch called 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown and it's on YouTube and it's really funny and if you like like British humor, you'll love it. So anyway, I should go because I'm running on and it's getting louder and everyone is returning really soon. But I hope that this was somewhat insightful and I, I, I'm sorry about if it seemed rushed. Um, but it is 11 o'clock at night and I know people need to go and do their lists and plan their group activities with their staff and get the rest that they need or, you know, cook for the rest of the week, you know, organize your life, feel good about the foods that you're eating, feel good about, you know, taking up a dance class or a yoga class or a medica meditation class, just to kind of help alleviate some of the things that we're feeling. And by all means, be the manager, be the staff member who's going to stand up for those who are having mental health conditions, be the staff who creates t from tomorrow pledge to yourself that you're going to be the staff member who creates a safer and positive space for those in the community that you live in or the workplace that you're in or the family unit that you're in and be the person who is there for others and checks in on people and I mean I've been saying that for a while but I hope people really really try to do it I know it's an awkward thing to do but do remember that mental health is everywhere it's actually more prevalent than HIV, AIDS, cancer, and diabetes. Who would have thought? Which means, you know, I always tell people one in four people have some or have experienced some form of mental health condition, which means thousands of people, millions of people suffer with mental health conditions. And if you look at your own home environment, if there's six people in the house, at least one person has had a mental health condition at some point in time. Okay? All right. Mm. Love you all, keep being positive, keep being beams of life, and happy World Mental Health Day 2017. Deuces!